Thank you for joining me today as I do another painting and to get started on this. Now, this was going to be a painting of Zion National Park. Well, no big surprise for me because I paint up there a lot and enjoy painting the different cliffs and, and the seasons and the light and everything else. But what I'm looking for, uh, if I'm doing a studio painting, I'm going with a reference that I shot while I was up there. Now, always the reference photos I need a little bit of attention here and there. So the first part of my uh, painting adventure is always to take a look at the photograph, see what I can change, see what I can uh, do to make it better, and then come up with a thumbnail study that helps act as a guide for me as I do my paintings. So I'm going to turn to this photograph right here. And this particular uh, photograph is of a corner of the Sentinel. It has a little bit of this beehive uh, formation up in here and some of the white cliffs. Notice how the cliffs are kind of white down to about this point. And then we see pink and then a, another strata line of white and, and the pink cliffs as they come down. Well, those are some significant factors, but I'm mainly interested in the, uh, the light and the shadow. Now here's a, a, a big shadow shape that comes across and works up into here and comes back up. So we have a dark, 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 and then this light shape here and here. Well, I like the, the shapes, but I'm a little bit uh, concerned about the flow, uh, the eye flow, as, as the viewer works, works through this painting. So what I did was I, I came in with another uh, smaller uh, print of that particular photograph and I just printed it out here in my studio uh, just on regular bond paper. Then I take the um, a, a little white charcoal pencil and a darker say a 5 or 6B pencil and I work right on this uh, this photograph. Now let me show you an example of that. Here's this small little photograph, and I've made a lot of marks on that before I even did my value study trying to decide, well, how do I crop it? What can I add to it? How can I make a better composition by combining the shapes with the edges of the rectangle that I have? And all of those kinds of things. So let's take a closer look at this one now as I lay this on top. And you see all kinds of marks on here. Well, as I gradually worked through this composition, I finally decided that if I could do some cropping and pull the, the image in just a little bit, I might be able to tie these dark shapes into the edges a little. So I came along and I just took a few little corners here. I start uh, working on... Uh, cropping it slightly and I start to get a little bit better composition. Now I'm wanting to see down in this dark area here maybe some uh, shrubs at the top of a juniper tree or something like that that comes into it so that I can have some foreground, middle ground and distance which I'm always looking for. That gives us uh, that gives us a lot of depth in the painting when we do that. We want to get that foreground, middle ground, and distance. So I'm using these corners here to try to compose this picture a little bit better. And notice that up here uh, I've brought in the uh, kind of a sky shape that sweeps down and comes in and joins this so that maybe I can start to build uh, more of an S curve or something that has a little better eye flow to it as you go through it. But I always like to use the skies when, because the skies are a very uh, important part of a scene. If you're going to include the sky, you may as well let it be part of the uh, composition and let the clouds or the, the, uh, the dark blue of the sky move into the painting. Well, that's what I'm trying to do here. So I took a little bit of my white charcoal pencil and made some marks up in here and brought these shapes down into and right up to the edges here. Then I took my other pencil, my darker pencil, and I thought, well, I'll darken this sky up a little bit up in here, and the dark blue will come down and join into it. So all of these things are a plan that I'm going to do. Well, so uh, I went from there then to 
my value study, okay? I've made some compositional changes, of course, but I'm really looking at the lights and the darks. Now, let me hold this up and see how tiny that is compared to my hand. That's why we call it a thumbnail study. And it's gonna be a guide. I'm gonna set this next to my painting when I do it, and I'm gonna use this for a guide. I'm gonna set my photograph aside because I only need that for maybe reference on some of the structural elements and, and where these uh, strata bands are and so forth and so on. But what I really want to do is start to look at this and say, hey, how's this gonna flow through here? And what kind of a composition have I got? And now I've tied the dark that's here up into the edge here, and it ties into the page so that we wanna come in off of the, the uh, rectangle that we have here as our compositional ground, come in off of that and, and move through the painting. And so I've also connected this dark here instead of having the light come all the way down here. Over here I've brought it over and connected with this side as well. So now I'm connecting this side, this side, this side, and I have the top come down and connect this way. So the uh, outside of my picture plane here becomes part of my composition as well. So there we go. Now I've, I've, I've got my path set up. I've got my road map. Um, with, with these things in place, I'm ready to set the photograph aside, put the value study up, get my paper and mount it on the board and get ready to paint. Okay, so now we've brought in this beautiful uh, color in here that we've done uh, with the wet and wet technique, putting in first the yellow ochre and then the cadmium red and then touching the ultramarine blue into it. All this is done in that first three to four minutes of the painting. Uh, you want to do it quickly, make your statement and walk away from it. If you don't, then we're going to get something that looks manufactured. So we know that we're going to have some lights 
and, and then it gets a little darker as it comes down. Well, let's, let's work on those lights. I'm going to use a very, very, very light, light yellow here, and I'm going to scumble this in for some of these uh, lighter uh, values up in this area. Look how I'm using my brush. I'm laying it on its side to catch the, the uh, texture of this paper. Now I'm going to take a little bit of, uh, we have some, some pinks into this as well. We can't just let it be straight yellow, that's for sure. So we're going to just kind of keep, keep going here, get our yellow down. We'll have some strong whites kind of right up here at the top and up in here. But we don't want just pure white. It's got to have this gray to it, but we want the gray to mix as we push this across the paper and form naturally. Let the watercolor do its job. Don't force it. Let it, let it do the work. I'm kind of staying away from this edge out here because I don't want it to run into the sky. But now we're getting uh, some lovely um, light beige colors down in here and I'm just going to keep on bringing those down now. Uh, let's touch a little bit of this red again up into here. We see some coming down and I'm going to grab a little bit of quinacridone coral as well which is a little uh, little cooler red. Let that come down in here and then touch a little bit of my blue into that to gray it back slightly. There, now we'll get a, a luscious natural looking gray up in this area. Uh, just kind of a beige look to it. I'm allowing it to blend and I'm bringing this down as I go. Now as I approach this area right here, I'm going to get into some warmer red. So I'm going to be using a what what I call um, the quinacridone. This is my my burnt orange is this quinacridone color that comes down. And it's about in this area we change the tone from this light to this darker uh, area right in here. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that down in here. And this is kind of a warm orange, but I'm doing it while this is still wet so there's not a hard edge up here where that breaks. It's just kind of a soft edge. And I can work that as I go. But let's come down here with some stronger yellows. Let those mix together. Remember, this, these are our light and middle values that we're laying down right now. As you can see, as we're bringing this down, we're changing from light and we're going into these reds, but they're very, very light. These will be our lightest ones, and then I'll just keep going. But right here across the middle is going to be kind of a band of light, and I'm going to Go ahead and lighten that up right now, but also not leave it white white because it's not going to be, but I want to see it there. So then I'll come back down here now to these stronger reds, bring that right up to it, and touch a little bit of quinacridone orange, which is a, just a, more of a brownish. This would be more like a true more like a true uh, sienna color. And then I'll just bring this right down to the bottom. I'm going to let things get a little bit dark down here. So notice how I'm allowing pigment to mingle uh, as, we, as we flow and going back into different colors as I approach this bottom area. Okay, now I've got these bands of color coming. They're very rough, very loose. But hey, I can always go darker, and I will but it's pretty tough to go lighter again once you lose your your light area. So we'll move along here um, kind of carefully. And let this pigment mingle and work and do its job. Uh, a lot of people are very surprised when they see how I go about my paintings when uh, they see the finished product and it seems like there's a lot of detail in it. Well, there is, but um, we approach that kind of slowly. <laughs> we don't just launch into that. 
Now what I'm going to do here is just while this is still wet, bring a few of these stronger colors up in here, let it cross through, bring some deep reds all the way down and let that cross over. Again, this is all to create texture and that feeling of texture. Now here, if we're dry up here, we're pretty close to being dry. I'm going to take this, uh, this one inch aquarelle brush and I'm going to do some splattering. I'm going to splatter with clear water into this mix that I already have. Now just in case, I'm going to cover that sky. But I'm pretty sure it's done enough. Now watch what happens when I splatter clear water into this mix. That's just going to create even more texture than what I've already got. Just adds a little bit more junk in there. So now we've got this gradual flowing of orange to light to to red we've protected that sky and we've got our basic basic light lights in there now this is always my approach when I paint um, I want to to come in here and I want to leave the lights where I need them and it's easy to do when you put dark against light and this isn't wet and this is well that stops the edge so now we have this edge that's right here and we'll have to soften, soften that a little bit as we go but we got a lot of work to do to start building up these values and these shapes so we're at a good point right now let's let this die down and then I'm going to move back up here and try to get a little bit on these distant cliffs and establish those before I work into the darker dark shapes down in here right at the bottom I'm going to have some um, shrubbery that comes up into there uh, I'm thinking it's a juniper but I don't know but since this is wet right now and it's starting to dry a little bit I'm going to drop some pigment down into here now see how it's starting to fan out and glow now I'm going to take a little bit of orange and touch that into it because I know this area is going to it's going to be quite dark down in here altogether but I'm going to have it even darker up in there as I plan ahead and I'm going to get some yellows, reds, oranges down into here so this shrubbery that comes up is going to get its start right now. I'm going to leave some of the red showing through and let this pigment just kind of be a base for what's going to happen down in here later and I'll just extend this over into this area a little bit okay so what we do is we just kind of build it up from light to dark and put the color down where we can and kind of let it go all right this is going to be fun as we get down now we'll have some very very dark shadows that will come down and meet the edges of this and we're going to shape some branches and Huh, you'll love how this is going to come together. I'm excited about it.
I've got a lot of the light values in and a few of the middle values as well. No real darks yet. They're going to come further on into the painting. Uh, even towards the end we'll be laying them down. That's why sometimes we say every painting goes through an ugly stage. Well that's really because it's all too light. And the answer to that is more darks. That's usually the answer in watercolor to a better painting is get going, get the darks in there and finish it up. Some people stall out halfway through. Well, we're at this stage where we've got these light values uh, coming in here and it, it, it's, it's, we can still see everything, but it doesn't have any power yet. It's got to receive that as we go along. So now what we're going to try to do is to establish some of these darker passages in here that, and even maybe get into a few areas where there's the darkest darks. There will be some down in here and some down in this area. And then we can establish, is this too light or too dark? Once we have the lightest lights and then some middle values and then the darkest darks, it helps us to evaluate the whole painting. So we'll be working into that right now. And we'll bring in some of these uh, cast shadows, which are darker, they're always darker, and get this whole area in that drops in down in here and some of these stronger shadows up in this area. So that's what we'll work on right now and we'll forge ahead with that. Oftentimes I like to take a, a, a pencil and even at this point start to uh, mark in a little bit where those darker darks are. So now this, as it comes down, this is going to be the edge of this cliff face as it comes out. It's going to drop back in here and it has a couple of facets that come along and work their way down. It goes back, 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 back. But all this is in cast shadow back in here. So we don't have to worry about that too much at this point. But we do need to, to define this edge and make sure we don't, we don't come out past that edge. This will be quite a bit warmer up into here, this part right in here and then it'll kind of drop back as we as we move our way back into to space here okay now these lines are helping me to see where i'm going to go oftentimes i'll get a lot of color down then i'll start to refine refine the shapes and uh, get them where i need them to go and so that's what i'm doing right now i'll just uh, work through a couple of these areas uh, and uh, what i'm needing is these cached shadow shapes and we'll start to work those in right now. Let's see where those come. All right now right up in here we're looking at this area right down in here we've got a big old cast shadow. This is just kind of a light thing that runs up and you'll see some cracks and and things like that, but we got to get these these cast shadows that come in on this other side after it turns, and bring those around into here. So once I get this kind of sketched into my satisfaction, and and see where I want to uh, create these darks, where they're they're going to be, then I can get going on the painting part of it. But I need to define these these darks and and where they're gonna they're gonna move. Now sometimes what I'll do to remind myself where those, especially the cast shadows are, is I'll go ahead and darken them in. Because once I once I lay the uh, the uh, pigment on this, this pencil mark will be covered up, and I don't want to make a pencil mark except for where I need those dark darks. So let's start working on some of that. Then. Let's get some. I'm going to be pulling in a lot of blues now for this, these cast shadows. Blues and uh, kind of purples, I guess, as we work our way back into this. As I turn this corner, I, because I've got to go darker than that up in here. So let's just see how dark we need to go on these. Is it going to 
be down in this area. We've got a pretty dark cast shadow that's coming down into here. Just a little bit of one there. Now I've got to soften these edges again. Right here, soften that. That comes down. I'll come down here and I've got to at least going to have this dark of a shadow up right up in here, in this area. And once we start to get some darks in there, we start to, we can start evaluating, well, how dark do I need to go on these others? And so we just, we just need to uh, work on that slowly and kind of keep going. So I'm going to come down in here with some reds and build all of this dark area right down in here. Yeah. And here we go. We'll start pulling these down and darkening this up. And I'll pull in uh, warm reds and cool reds as we go. I'm going to bring these shadows down and kind of finish them off. I'm going to let that move over. There's a, kind of an arch there, but I'm going to let that move over. I still want some warms down in here, so let's, let's don't uh, make it too cool, but let's go ahead and get some, some warms down into here, and then we can always pull those back. We get down into this area. Down in here, we want a lot of stuff going on. Now this is where our power comes from when we start to get down into these darks. And if we don't have darks, we don't have anything. But we, with watercolor, we have to take it slow. Because once we lose the lights, they're gone. Okay, now I'm going to keep bringing this down. A new shadow will come up here. Now I'm going to let this die out right here. I'm going to soften an edge or two and let that die out because I'm going to come in here with some darker darks and define the edges of this tree in a minute, but I don't have time to do that right now. I've got to move over and get the rest of these darks and move this direction. Look at that variety of color that we have in here. That's all very important. I'll soften this edge. Soften this edge. So I have to get back and look at it uh, from time to time to see how I'm doing. I think I want to get a few more of these really red reds right up in here. Now down in here, we don't care if there's oozles or any of these weird little cauliflowers or anything, because we want texture. We want all kinds of texture and all kinds of things happening down into there, because we don't want to have to delineate every single edge as we come around. We want to have it um, it looked natural as we get into these turns. Okay, I like the warms and the cools in there. That's got some power to it. Uh, a couple of these long cracks, I'll bring them down into here. And, um, Now I'm going to come in and uh, kind of darken up this area slightly where this changes from light to uh, dark down in here. I'm going to make that transition. I'm going to just darken the tone. I still want it to be warm out there, but I've just got to change that. Ch 
Okay, when I stop talking, that means I'm thinking. <laughs> and uh, sometimes, for me, that's a big challenge. I'll keep going here and bring these this red down, yeah. You know? So we get this red tone that's coming across there. And again, I'm using a variety of, of color. I don't want to just, uh, you know, I'll reach from that into a, a blue, and then I'll reach into an orange, and I'll let the pigments mingle as I go. Uh, then I'll add a little bit of a warmer red, and a cooler red, all that together. And I'll start working up into this area and soften all of this now. So let's bring that right down to here and stop that where this white patch comes, comes through right here. And then I'll keep moving. I'm going to move into a uh, little bit darker. I'm going to work this dark into this as we come down. Sometimes you wonder, well, why is he still using a, this smaller brush? Uh, no particular reason. I could use a big flat and cover a lot more ground. But as I'm going, I'm trying to use the side of it to create some texture as well. And um, you can do it easier with this tool than you can the other. So I'm a little more comfortable with it. And that would be the only reason. Okay, so let's see, we've got this tone come down and this white area. We don't want it to be a hard line, but we want it to be there. Okay, now I'm going to really get going down into here. Some darker darks. I'll put out a little bit of carbazole violet to mix with this. And what I want to have happen now is I want to get some real dark darks down in this area. It's going to finish things off, and if I go over what's already there, then it just makes it that much darker. And I want these strong, pure colors to come through. soften these sides, these sides, and now I've got some business to attend to here. I'm going to um, come down here and as I bring these darks in here, I'm going to shape a few branches and things that are going to stick out from this, this tree that's there. I'm going to do it using negative painting. So I'm going to use a smaller brush and um, work my way down into this area down in here and really start to uh, uh, refine that a little bit. Now I'm going to see if I can zoom in slightly and show you where we're at here. I'm going to just slide this up and as I'm working, I'm going to let you see that just a little bit closer. I'm going to come closer yet. Uh, you won't be able to see me mix, but you'll be able to see how we do these negative shapes. So I want some good, strong darks as, as it gets gradually darker. Now I'm going to come down into here with those darks. Let it gradually blend up into there, but I need the darks up against this edge. So I'm going to come down into here and make some harder edges where this, uh, let's see.
I could use even a very, very small brush like this, but most of the time I'll just use a, a Richardson brush. But what I want to see now is some edges of maybe some pine needles, branches, and so forth. This is wet back into here, but now I'm going to create some branches. Right here, I'm going to create a stick that comes out. And you see that starting to form as I pull these darks. I'm painting the darks once again to reveal the lights. That's what happens. You, you, ha you paint the darks and a lot of times we think once we're painting the darks we paint a stick or something. No, we don't want, we don't want to see the stick. We want to see these little um, branches and uh, things not in dark but in light. And that's what looks natural to us because our eye always goes to the lightest light against the darkest darks in nature. So if we want to draw some attention then we have to show the lights. So now I'm showing a little bit of structure of some, some branches. See how I'm forming a branch here, here, and here. And where I don't know where they're going to go or what's going to happen or how they're going to end, just fade them out. Just let them, let them bleed. But as I do this, now suddenly you're seeing some branches form. Well, that's, that's called negative painting. And we can refine this a lot more as we go on, but let's just do a little bit right now so you can see the process. Let's come up in here, bring this down, and let's make just a little branch that comes up out of the, out into that red area. And instead of leaving the stick, we let that bleed into the background and we see the light. So that's the pattern. That's the way we do uh, negative painting. And it looks so natural because we get to see uh, the same things in the same way that we see in nature. So all of a sudden, where a minute ago we just had a big clump of green, now we're darkening this down and we're, we're coming back into um, a, an area where we're seeing the actual shapes of a tree and not just a big clump of green. Okay, now I'm going to darken this up again over on this side. And I'll come back in and refine this towards the end. But right now, let's just get these branches where we want them. Watch these form, painting the darks, revealing the lights. Now, we don't want hard edges all the way around. Some of these we want to just blend in and let those edges soften slightly. We'll still see the sticks and the branches and everything, but look how much different that looks now. So this, from this close angle, we can see how this is starting to build. But I, I want you to notice one thing, that is that we have lots of different colors in here. Uh, and we work from you know dark to light, and we have these variations, uh, soft edges, hard edges. That's what makes it sing. So now I'm gonna let this back down again. Now look at it right now. We've got some dark darks, we've got some light lights, We've got some middle values, and now we're going to start building this painting up in between. And do all of the uh, rest of the values in between the darkest darks and the lightest lights. Now, our darkest darks are always going to be up here somewhere in the foreground. A dark here is never going to be uh, the same value as a dark back there. This dark back here is going to always be lighter than this is. If we change that around, then we're changing the laws of nature and the painting will not look accurate. 
So we want to try to control those kinds of things as we go and pay attention to what nature shows us and do the same things, but also do it in our own way. So now from here to the finished stages, this all happened in uh, roughly an hour. Well, we got a lot of it laid in there, but now uh, I've got a lot more time to spend on this. I'll spend more time on the next part of it, bringing it all into focus, than I spent bringing it up to this stage right now. Sometimes I'll bring a painting to this stage, set it aside, and start another painting and bring it to that stage. And when I brought that up, I come back and get this and then take a hard look at it and say, oh, gee, I didn't see that, or oh, man, I better do this. Sometimes it helps to just step away from it, set it aside, and come back and look at it later. So let's set this aside right now, and then we'll come back in a little bit, and I'll reevaluate where we are, and we'll continue to work on the darks. And when we get those darks in there, that's what gives us power. And that's what makes this whole thing sing. So let's set this aside and uh, we'll come back. Okay, now it's, we're ready to continue on with this. I'm going to work on these shadow areas up through here. Uh, mainly cast shadows and then start to form them. We've got to get this, we've got these darks now, we've got to get these darks that run down this side right here. They're going to be darker than these are. These are going to be darker than what these are. That's the way it works and that's how it looks like we're going back in space a little bit. So I'm going to, uh, I think I'll grab my uh, low Cornell brush again uh, right now. This one that has, it holds a lot of uh, a lot of water, but it also maintains a nice point. And I think you can see that. And that's why I use these brushes quite a bit. And uh, they're nothing special about my brushes. They just, uh, I like to use synthetics. I'm not crazy about um, sable. Um, it holds a lot of paint too. I just don't like the response. Uh, I like to have a little more snap to the brush. And, and uh, it's just what you're used to. And one thing's not any better than the other, so don't let anybody tell you it is. The, the painting is not in the equipment. You could paint with your elbow if you were good enough, and some people do. And so uh, we're lucky that we have this good equipment and these good brushes. So I'm mixing a little bit of this uh, ultramarine blue. This is quinacridone coral down in here. I'm going to dance between the two of those. I want to be sure and have some uh, of this very, very warm quinacridone sienna as well as I work into this. But first of all, I'm going to try to get a dark enough dark that I can um, make these cast shadows as they come down here. And they're going to be a little bit darker than anything else. So I want to establish those uh, right now. And get those coming down. Now I'm going to soften these edges here and here. Okay, so that'll just blend into that. Now I'm going to let this blue come down on this side, and you'll see the blue. You'll you'll recognize it as blue and not orange or brown. That's because it is a cast shadow, and it's picking up the blue from the sky. It's also going to be quite dark. That's what's going to give us some power here. Um, might look a little bit garish at first, but I don't think it will when we when we get finished. We have to have some confidence in the direction we're going, and we get that confidence through what I like to call brush mileage or experience. Um, you can go to all the workshops you want to, or buy all the videos you want to. But until you try these techniques, uh, it's not going to help you any in your paintings. Uh, if we just sit and always just watch somebody else paint, it's nothing more than, than like watching a magician or somebody else uh, just dazzle you and say, wow, look at how he can do that. Isn't that great? Well, that's fun sometimes, but the idea is you want to do it. And so that's where we're to right here. We're going to show you how to do it and then hopefully you'll 
have the confidence to do about 1,500 paintings or so, which is what I've done in my career. And uh, I think I've learned something in that time. But I've learned it from me. You need to learn it from you, for you. Now I'm going to come down here and let's get, uh, I want to really get a blue feel to this. So kind of a purple look, a lot of blue in there. They, again, these are the cast shadows. And once they're made, I will uh, form some of these others over here. But let's get those laid in and bring those across. There's another cast shadow up in here. And I don't have time to go any further than right here because I've got to come in and soften these edges. So I'm going to bring this really strong blue but really dark right up in this area. And now I'll come in here as quickly as I can and start softening up some of these outside edges here. And once I get some water on those, then I can come back in with some warms and touch it just so it looks like these just turn to form shadow and then go from the form shadow into the cast shadow. Again, I'm gonna grab some reds right up in here and let that just mingle in on the form shadow side of this and it'll look like it just turns nicely. Once we we make the statement and know where we're going, then we just work these dimensions, light to dark, warm to cool, and try to get these shapes to form uh, in, in the same manner that these are down in, in here. And we're replicating nature, so it makes it easy to study what nature does and try to uh, replicate that and that's basically what we're doing right now we're just trying to replicate what we see but we need to understand what we see too now the remainder of this painting is going to be uh, continuing to to bring up the darks and to make this whole thing come together as our value study is if our value study worked then this is going to look good if we cheated on the value study then none of this is going <laughs> to look good but hopefully uh, hopefully we have hopefully we've, we've done our our homework, made our plan, and um, we'll start to, to get something here that's pretty exciting. Now these come down right against this edge here, and we have a bunch, kind of a tree bank that forms up here as this cliff comes up and joins it. And we have another place like that right up, right up in here, right where this ends, and we have some, let's see if we can, makes a little gray green right up in here that's going to be the the foliage uh, up in here is actually trees and junipers and, and sage and other things but from this far back it's difficult to tell what they are so I'm just going to get a little of that in there um, I'll take a touch of sap but not very much because it's too far back and bring that into it and get some of these things that are happening here. We see them again up in this area, right up in here. Again, we can put a little of that in, but we want to reserve things like that for the tail end. Don't be putting in all these little thousands of little dots. We want to get the feeling that there's a value change here, and that's all we want. We don't want to continually have um, just new hard edge shapes everywhere. With watercolor, we want to see those soft and hard edges as we go. So what we're getting is, is these shapes here, here, and now we'll bring some down into this area as well. And these are going to be just a little bit, a little bit warmer because they're closer to us. And then we can come in and darken those up. Detail isn't the answer, um, although I do like to, to do quite a bit of it in my paintings. 
I like I like to make them look pretty real, but um, what it does do is is it it kind of brings certain things into focus, so we can use it as a tool as we begin to uh, to complete our painting and and get closer to the finished look. We can um, use a few little details individual lines, things like that. I've got a place for them here. You can see my pencil marks, at least I think you can see some of them. And you see where I'm going with this. And uh, there's a lot more detail work I can add to it. But basically, if I get my values right, the statement will be made and I don't have to rely on tons of that later on. So I'm gonna to continue to darken uh, some of these areas up here as these uh, cliffs come up from the bottom. I want there to be a good base down here, keeping keeping a, a variety of colors still, but it needs to be dark down in here. That way we have a base for all this to stand on. We want our attention to be up into this area, not down here. So we've got to control that. All right, now I'm going to um, kind of complete some of these, uh, you know, darks as they come down from this side. Uh, notice that there's uh, over in this area right here, we have some, some big shapes as it turns and it kind of gets darker as it comes down. I'll make that happen right now. Once again, the reason for that is we don't want all this light to overpower this. We want this light to to lead up and, and balance into this and we don't want too much light right down in here so we want to see the shapes but we just don't want it to be that light. I'm going to touch a little bit of blue in there to give it a more natural feel. You'd be surprised how often uh, you need to put in a little touch of blue to, to soften things and to um, gray them out just a little bit. But the eye sees it, and it helps to balance with the other blues that are on there. So I'll bring those in. Okay, good. I feel like this is coming along nicely. Now we've got all our light values, and we've got most of our middle values. Now we just have to complete some of these darks. As they come down, this needs to be much darker in this area as it comes down, but I don't want to lose my warmth, so I got to approach that uh, very carefully. I like uh, we've left some branches and some detail up in the foreground. That's where it belongs, not back here or here. It belongs up in here. So uh, as we we work on this and uh, get it to this stage, once again, let's set it aside for a little bit. Let that dry down. I'll come in and start to do more detail into here and bring it to conclusion. So we've got a good start on this thing. We just need to, to finish it off and uh, get the darkest darks in there and we'll be set. Okay, so now as I continue on with this, I'm really working on a, a few detail uh, items more than anything else. I'm bringing in a few of these, uh, the shrubs that we see down in here, uh, in th these areas. It's just kind of um, identifying uh, the, right, the right things for the right places and in the right value ranges as well. Because as we get further back, we, we, uh, things recede in value. And so this mountain is pushed back. We don't want to have darks back in here that are as dark as what we have up in the foreground. Right now we need some more darks up here. So I'm going to bring some of these shrubs and um, be a little bit uh, uh, well, loose with, with where I place these as I start to bring this painting uh, into the uh, finished stages, uh, bringing in the darks as we mentioned at the start. Uh, those darks help to uh, balance everything. So as we continue to uh, progress on this, it's just a matter of going progressively darker and refining the um, 
value shapes that we've created already. And um, for me, it's it's always a matter of getting down the uh, the the lights first, and then the middle values, and then coming in here with these dark darks and completing the scene. And sometimes what I'll do down here in the um, in the bushes or anything that's in the foreground. So I'll make sure that I've identified where the darks are going to go. Now I'm going to have a branch coming right up here and moving out through that. So I'll grab my darks now and start to make me a pool. I'll use thalo for the really, really dark darks. This is thalo green. I'll use some sap green over here combined with some yellow uh, for some of the parts that are that are out here that are uh, it showed a little bit more of the green green, but I'll dull those back with a little bit of quinacridone. So that gives us more of a this this kind of a olive look to it. And this will go more over here on the shadow side. Then my really dark darks are gonna go down here. And I will carefully shape some branch structure that's going to grow out of this middle part. If we stay true to our value study and our plan, most of the time we're going to have success. It's when we start ad-libbing and deviating from that plan uh, in route, so to speak, that we, we start to uh, run into some problems. But again, notice we're using the reds and, and uh, also uh, a lot of this uh, uh, thalo for our deep darks, but we're still using a lot of this quinacridone and it's kind of shining through and that gives us uh, some of the warmth that's up here. But now I'm going to continue this dark down into the bottom here, leaving some highlights here and there. And pull this down. Bring some dark darks up in here. A few more branches. And I'll continue to work on this and keep this going. And then you can see how necessary it is for us to get into these um, uh, dark darks up here in order to balance the darks that we have behind. And now it's pulling this bush up a little bit forward uh, the way we, we would want it to do. Putting down the darks, but I'm watching these light areas grow. I'm watching these branches, see how light that looks now as it comes up against there. We didn't even hardly see it before. Um, in this area right here, we don't need it all over, but just a couple of little places where we see some tiny branches up in that foreground. It's going to pull this bush right up into our face. Instead of seeing dark lines, we see these little light lines of this structure that's, that's dancing around out here. Now what I'm doing here is I'm feeling these reds and feeling that there needs to be a few more of them down in here. That's why I'm grabbing um, these while I'm working the reds there. I'm saying, yes, but I need some of those over here to balance. And I feel that red pull down into this area and I feel like I'm needing it as well over into some of these areas. And this is all by Phil. This is more abstract painting than anything. It's just saying, what do I need um, to make this, this whole painting feel unified? Well, I'm getting down to the point now where I'm pretty much done and what I usually do when I get to a stage like this is I start to 
and bring in a mat or something and put over it. Okay, now I've placed a mat over this uh, painting to kind of see where we're at on it. It, it, looks, uh, it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. There's going to be a few areas of detail or something that needs to, uh, that probably would need my attention. Uh, but what I'll do now is I'll just set it aside and put it up on the shelf where I can and see it for a few, a few days and, and uh, move on to something else. And then if there is something that's glaring, uh, you might can see it where you're at, but I'm going to uh, look at it and I'll come back. At this point it would just be a matter of some minor judgments. I did make a few changes. Uh, this area right here, I had uh, I had the structure kind of wrong here, so I lifted this little portion by rubbing out the paint that was there and added these other shadows that came down more of it at an angle to parallel this other shape over here. I feel a little more comfortable about it. I also had to get some darker darks down in here and, uh, and darken up some of these blue shadows in the foreground and make them darker than what we have back there. And hopefully um, at this point then uh, we're pretty close. I like the way the negative painting went right in this area here and uh, to pull this forward to bring it back closer to us here. And so now we have again this foreground, middle ground distance and trying to get the viewer to go back in space. I like how the clouds worked and le leads into it and uh, I feel like it's, it's a pretty good painting. So I, uh, thanks for coming by and taking a look at this. I hope you'll join me for another painting later on. This is Roland Lee and uh, we'll see you again in the studio or hopefully out on the trail somewhere.